Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. When Kenny Jones was 16, he had his first hit record and shot to fame with the Small Faces, who were at the heart of the mod revolution, which swept Britain at the time and a band who have had been cited as a major influence on musicians during the 50 years which have followed. When the Small Faces split, Kenny was instrumental in forming the Faces and invited Rod Stewart to be featured as lead singer. The Faces took the rock world by storm in the early 1970s on both sides of the Atlantic and became one of the most raucous, fun-loving bands of all time with a fanatical following. The Faces split in the mid-70s and Kenny, along with Steve Marriott in McGlagan and new man Rick Wills reformed the Small Faces, touring for a couple of years and making two albums before deciding to call it a day. By this time, Kenny was recognized as one of the top drummers in the rock industry, and it was no surprise that he was the Who's choice to replace Keith Moon after his tragic death in 1978. After leaving The Who, Kenny hooked up with former Bad Company singer Paul Rogers to form The Law in the early 1990s, and Kenny's most recent venture is forming a new band called The Jones Gang. Please welcome legendary drummer and rock and roll Hall of Famer, best known for being a member of the Small Faces, Faces, and The Who, Kenny Jones, to interviewing the legends. Hello, Kenny. Hello there. Well, Ray, you certainly took me down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always difficult when I interview somebody that has belonged to so many bands. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I well, your old bandmate, Rick Wills, I had him on the show um, I don't, Yeah, about last year or so. Uh, I think it was during the election, but um, he lives around here. He lives pretty close to me. I'm in Sarasota, in the oh, Brainton, yeah, Sarasota so you're area. Quite close, yeah. Yeah. Have you visited him here or? No, he, he came over about two or three weeks ago because he used to live locally where I live. Right. And so we got to get, we got together for a beer. Oh, okay. Very cool. He's a nice guy. He's a oh, really yeah, nice guy. Coming. Yep. And now that foreigner is officially retiring, you know? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm glad they are because there's, you know, it's, it's, basically a cover band now <laughs> i know there's no originals in it exactly are you still um working with the jones gang what's happening there yeah no i'm, I'm still working with the jones gang we we kind of cherry pick gigs that we want to do and that's about it really but at okay the moment, I'm, I'm working with uh, rod stewart and ronnie wood oh we, right but, now you are okay oh, yeah well not actually right now we have been okay you know, on, but we've just uh been working on a, a new album uh, so we were, you know, we did some tracks about eight months ago. Really? We had to stop because the Stones had to go on tour. Right. So Rob, Rob went on tour to do Vegas and things like that. Yeah, I, I heard you guys were working or going to be working on an album together, and this was a while ago. Yeah, and, that's right. And I'm glad it came to fruition. That's awesome, man. Hmm. Yeah, we've got a lot more work to do on it. Also, we're revamping our back catalogue as well. Right. Do you think you guys will take it on the road or anything? Or well, I think so. I think they'd like us to to promote the whatever we're doing. You know, yeah, it's, it's a record company's job, isn't it? Get your get your get get yourself out there and promote. Exactly. Well, Rod's coming here. He's coming to the Hard Rock in Tampa. Oh, great! Uh, yeah, I think the beginning of next year sometime. And uh, I covered the Hard Rock, uh, all the shows over there. But Rod's probably going to be a difficult interview to get. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have fun with him. You'll have a great deal of fun. You'll laugh your head socks off. Yeah, he looks like a great guy. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, Martin Barr says hello. I interviewed Martin the other day, and he says, make sure he says hello to you. Oh, great. I want to talk, first of all, um, I had kind of a, a little confusion when there was the transition between the small faces and faces back in the day, because yeah. I was wondering, you know, why is the faces uh, using the small faces name, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. When we first signed the Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. 
Um, we were just about to sign the contract. I said, he said, and I looked at the, 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 the name of the band and it said Small Faces. I said, hang on, we're not the Small Faces. It's, it's a completely different band. I said, we're the, we're a different band. We haven't got a name yet. We, we're, we're completely different. So we're not going to, we're not going to call ourselves the Small Faces. And they said, well, you can't have all this money then. <laughs> so I said, okay, let's record the, the first album, call it um, Small Faces. After that, we're, we'll call it Faces because we have nothing small about us anymore. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. So that's how, that's how we got the Faces name, which actually worked out fantastic. Yes, it did. I got to hand it to you, man. I, the Small Faces is one of my favorite bands of all time. And you guys were pioneers of rock and roll. And Zeppelin owes you big time. <laughs> oh, you know, Robert Plant used to follow us everywhere. And I, I used to do a lot of sessions with, with Jimmy. Oh, really? Yeah, in the early days. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, first of all, you need loving. I oh, mean, yeah. that's, that's, you know, that's a Zeppelin track now but it belongs to you guys and uh, i take it as a, flat, a compliment a very flattering compliment but it's true yeah no, <laughs> no, it's true. you know did, did you ever I, I know you guys were all friends and everything but you never thought about a lawsuit or anything like that the way uh, they copied you no no, no? no way they, the guys are too good nice guy yeah but there's so many other songs like um the beginning of Tin Soldier sounds like Peter Frampton's Do You Feel Like We Do? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, know <laughs> that too, I know that too, but Peter's a lovely guy too, so let's bygones be bygones. <laughs> I can't help but noticing these things. I was I was actually a top 40 DJ back in the late 70s, so, you know, oh. that's, that's kind of my thing. The other one, um, Come On Children. Oh, yeah. It sounds, you know, I mean, that's... That there's some great drumming on that. Um, Thank you. It, and that sounds a lot like the Who, you know. But you're an incredible drummer, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me any, they don't flatter me anymore these days. <laughs> what have you been doing lately? I know you're working on this album, but what what else is going on in your life? Oh, my, just being with my family and just right. You know that sort of thing, and uh, playing drums and playing drums and playing drums. Do you practice every day, or no? I, I just <laughs> I'm too lazy. You're too... <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> I practice going up the pub and having a pint. Yeah, and yeah. And, and practice. Yeah, I do. I do practice whenever I can. Yeah, um, Martin Martin Barr says he, he he practices every day for two hours, but he says it's not practice. He just enjoys it. Uh, yeah, I know. <clears throat> I mean, I got I've kept so busy with doing other things that uh, no time to practice. I mean, I I think about drums night and day, so that's my practice. Yeah. Do Do you have uh, children, grandchildren? I have nine grandchildren, one great grandson. Oh, congratulations, man! That's Thank awesome. You very much. Like, I need to go and sort of pay for them all. <laughs> <laughs> Are they close by? Do they live in England? Uh, yes, yeah, they live in England. Um, well, yeah, no, they do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's important. I I've got I five grandkids. What were you gonna say? I see a lot of them. Do you see a lot of them? Oh yeah. yeah. Do you, do you babysit? We babysit, and they babysit me. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Maybe twenty <laughs> years from now. <laughs> and you oh, hope yeah. they do. <laughs> Some when, of the when greats. They learn, when they learn, learn to drive, they can take me up the pub. Yeah, there you go. All they need to do is sit you on the store of the pub and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the great songs um, by the Small Faces, of course, Hitchiku Park, um, Lazy Sunday, uh, All or Nothing, Tin Soldier. Um, you guys, I can't tell you how much the the influence of the band made to the rock and roll world and well, Steve Marriott one of my favorite singers of all times me too I mean it's one of my favorite bands as well <laughs> because you know it's funny you know because when we first started in the small faces I never thought never thought 
to see what people saw in us. And now I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, that's that's amazing. You guys were a tight band, though. You know, you, oh, great yeah. musicians. And um, I was lucky to see Steve with the All Stars when he went on tour with the All Stars. But you know, it, it, you know, he was, he was such a great rock singer, and nobody had a voice like Steve Marriott. No, he's definitely more really distinctive, a very powerful voice vocalist. For that, you know, it's all about the same song, but. This power that came out of his his lungs were incredible. They were. Was was Steve a smoker? Yeah, I, I think yeah, he smoked kind of spliffs. Yeah, I ne yeah. I never figured out how um, lead singers could smoke and sing at the same time, but it they do. Well, you know? he did. He did. Rod, Rod doesn't. Rod doesn't. Huh? Yeah, he doesn't smoke. Yeah. You know, I talked to Dion Warwick and I huh. said, man, obviously you don't smoke. She says, man, I've been smoking since I was 15 years old. <laughs> yeah, I, I, used to, I used to smoke um, if, when I was seven years old. I started smoking. Seven? Uh, yeah, and I gave up on my 30th birthday last week. <laughs> seven to 30. Wow. Now, you grew up, what part of England did you grow up? Uh, well, the East End of London. Which is a quite, you know, the East End of London. It's like Brooklyn, really. Really? Yeah, a bit, a bit like that. Um, you, know, you always you always hear of Birmingham, you know, because all the great yeah. musicians came from Birmingham, you know. But well, uh, I'm a proper cockney, as they say. Is that, is that right? <laughs> I was born within the sound of Bow Bells. Right. You know, it's a great town now. Is Liverpool? Man, that that town looks it's it's really cool. No, no, it is. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, I know. When the Beatles were back in the day, they, I, I, I actually got a tour of Liverpool, a live tour on Zoom. Oh you, wow! You know, my my uh, daughter gave that to me for my birthday, and they took me to all the Beatle places. You know, which yeah. was really cool. So, you know, I didn't have to travel. My eldest granddaughter is from Liverpool. Really? Liverpool. Yeah. Oh. And so see a lot of uh it's a it's a great town now i mean they, they yeah. got a beautiful mall you know great shopping no they do yes <laughs> yeah yeah not, not, not then not then right it's pretty much industrial uh, it's a bit like it's, it's like a it's, it's like a shipping town you know right it's docks and... yeah it's changed a lot <clears throat> some of the other songs by the um small faces i love um jenny song beautiful song yeah. um and again you guys were very diverse you know the, the autumn stone was another beautiful track yeah. you know um song of a baker yeah uh what you're gonna do about it which uh, another this song sounds like dirty water by the standells yeah it does a bit yeah doesn't it i, I just had him on there larry oh, from the okay. standells was on I should have mentioned that to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone next to it, yeah. Uh, me and you, uh, me, you, and us, too, which is a, a favorite of mine. That's another great song. Um, then you came out with this album, Ogden's Nut Gone Flake. Where did you get that title? Ogden's Nut Gone Flake. Yeah. Yeah, that, that title was, well, we used to have a, we had a house in Westmoreland Terrace, we all lived together. I said I would never stay there. I lived just down the road. I'd never get any sleep if I stayed there. But what they used to, what we used to do, everyone used to roll up. Uh, we had this tin of tobacco called Ogden's Tobacco. So I know it was, a, it was in a tin. Mm -hmm. You lifted the tin up and you, you rolled your joints with it. And a packet of Rizzlers, which were all like papers, you rolled your cigarette up and put ash in it. Huh. This was a very uh, critically acclaimed album, and probably way ahead of its time too. Yeah, but what happened was we we didn't know when we we we, we sit there smoking away and going, well, getting stoned. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we realised when we finished albums, we said we didn't know what to call it. So we we, we looked down at the, this tin and it said Ogden's flake, like a flake, like tobacco. So we renamed it Ogden's Nut Gone Flake because it makes your nut go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
That was a great album. That's that's a classic. I, it I really think is. So. I think so as well. It's funny because we all have this. We're in the small phase, we all have this inbuilt telepathy. Right. We never told each other what to play or do. We just did it. And it's amazing how it all came together. It is amazing. You know, sometimes it's better not to over rehearse, you know? No. And over produce. It's just better to just go ahead well, and most, do it. Most songs we did were, were, were always on the first or the second take. Right. Yeah, you guys were, um, I know you were considered a kind of a pop band, but you guys didn't want that, did you? No, we didn't. No, that's uh -huh. I sort of wrecked the band, really, because the screaming girls like the Beatles did, you know, everywhere we went. We couldn't hear ourselves play. Yeah. Just screams and whatever. But, uh, and also, there was this, um, the record companies just wanted hit records, you know, like commercial songs. And so we found ourselves in, in this commercial sort of nowhere, Matt. Uh, sort of, I don't know what you call it now, sort of festival of um, you know, song, commercial songs. Right, right. So we, we thought, and we get to get fed up with it. So when we used to record, we, we, we didn't record, we only recorded songs that we liked, like Tin Soldier and those sort of songs. But then now and again, we have to turn out, we have to turn out, uh, um, they asked us to do a commercial song, so we did some different commercial songs. We never wanted to put them out. Huh. But that's where the money was. <laughs> yeah, for the record company, not us. Really? Oh, we got screwed. Oh, God, I hate to hear that. Oh, so many bands that. got screwed. You know? uh, in the 60s, it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Every band got screwed. Yeah. yeah. I talked to Tommy James. He got screwed big time by the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was probably a lot of mafia back then, right? Running record companies, a lot of guys like that. Yeah, not 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 so much in England, but in, yeah. in the States, yeah. Yeah. Um, Peter Grant, the manager of Zeppelin, right? He's um, a big guy, yeah, big guy. Oh, my God, the stories about him, you know? know. But he protected his band, didn't he? He certainly did, yeah. And, uh, and he, he, uh, he earned the band a fortune. He owed the band a fortune? He earned the band. Oh, earned a fortune. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no one would argue with Pisa. Yeah, I admire him. He he did a great job for Zeppelin. Oh, you yeah, know? Think, yeah. He was a good manager. He didn't take any crap from anybody. Another you guy know? that was pretty good was Colonel Parker. I mean, he made a lot of money for Elvis. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but he also made, made a lot of money for himself, didn't he? He did. He did. But he left him alone to, you know, take care of his music. He didn't have anything to do with, you know, the the music itself. It was, he was all in business. No, that's right. But he, he sort of burnt Elvis out, didn't he? He did. But interesting, he never toured Europe, you know? That's a, such a shame. Yeah, he never toured Europe. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that is a shame. It really is. Uh, one guy on that album, um, David McCullum Sr., right? Yeah, it, he he played on that uh, on that album. Um, he recorded some piano or something like that. Well, and that's of course David McCullum from The Man from Uncle, which he was one of my favorite actors yeah. growing up. So, wh where did you meet him, David McCullum? I can't remember to be honest. Really? Yeah, that was interesting though. But the. Um, the I mean, fairy tale, the fairy tale that's the album follows happiness Stan in his quest to find the missing half of the moon. After seeing the moon at half phase in the sky one night and misinterpreting the physics involved. Wow, I don't know how you came up with that, that well, man. It was, uh, Andrew Oldham said to us, um, you, need, you need to go around and write some songs. This is when we're on immediate records. And so we, he said, I've hired you each a boat to go up the River Thames. By Windsor Castle, so we right. said, okay, we're on the boat. So for for the long weekend, so we all became sailors. Without mm -hmm. the terrible sailors, we were <laughs> like, like a like a caravan on the floats. Right, it, right. I smashed into an old disused destroyer. Really? Yeah, I, yeah, I was hard making a turn. For you, so uh -huh. I didn't take it into account the current, and the water was running one way, and I was going the opposite way. So I wow. ended up smashing into an old destroyer. And I remember landing 
in the port, like someone had converted it into a house. And I ended up smashing it to the side. And I found myself, my face was, was looking into the port hole while people were having Sunday dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a Mac was, Mac was sailing away. We were behind him. And, he's, and he was... And he was, he was heading straight for this guy. This guy who was a, a bit of a yacht, a proper yachtsman coming the other way, the opposite mm-hmm. way. And he's um, he was dressed in white, white boat, white, white sort of sort of uh, ship, sort of boat, whatever you call it. And uh, white socks, white hat, white shoes, white trousers, white everything was white about it. It was he was like the, the captain. And this, and he's, as he got Matt got closer and closer, this, this guy's face dropped a little bit and sort of got more and more concerned until <laughs> Matt smashed him, smashed down the side of him. And, uh, and he, uh, Matt just kind of sailing on, and this guy was shouting out, Scourge of the Sea, Scourge of the Sea. <laughs> Did you get hurt so, from that incident? No, no, no one got hurt. We just had a good laugh. And we, had, yeah. we didn't write any songs, we just had such a good laugh. And then suddenly, yeah. Uh, the last day we thought, okay, we're just more up on the side, we lit, lit a fire, and, we, and then the moon was uh, sort of moonlight was just coming down. You know, so we just looked up, looked up in the sky and we thought, let's go. You know, it's like we can only see half the moon. So we were just talking about, where's the other half of the moon gone? So that's it. So we, we wrote, wrote a song about happiness, we invented happiness stand. Right. Uh, happiness stand was Ronnie's dad, Ronnie Lane's dad. Huh. He, was, he had three, three, you know, three double chins. Yeah. And he always smiled, always laughed. It's a jolly guy. So he's always happy. So we wrote the song. We invented the character called Happiness Stan, who goes in search of the other half of the moon. That's amazing. So that's how we got Ogden. Yeah. It's amazing where music comes from, mm. you know. Oh, yeah. You guys, to promote the album... You didn't. Somebody did an advertisement that parodied the Lord's Prayer, and pissed off some people, huh? Oh yeah, I know. We had t-shirts. <laughs> we got into <laughs> trouble with that. Bless me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, well there's got to be there's got to be some controversy somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's we didn't mean to offend anyone. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I was what I was going to say. Oh, when Steve Marriott left, what was what was the feeling when when he left the band? It was, it was a terrible shock because basically yeah. we were like blood brothers, you know. Right. Music, music, brothers, and um, it's like having a divorce or you lost one of your your friends, you know. And uh, so we completely were lost. Steve left, and and uh, we uh, kind of didn't know what to do. So. We were quite friendly with the Stones. Mm-hmm. The Stones said, "No, until you know what you're going to do, why don't you? We've got we, we've got a, um, a warehouse in in Bermondsey, Bermondsey Street, which is about right about the Tower Bridge of London." And uh, so why don't, we've got a little rehearsal room there, like a little soundproof room. Why don't you go have a little play there until you know what you're doing? So they lent us this room, and so once a week or Two times a week, we could go down and have a little play. We ended up, ended up jamming away a lot mm-hmm. until we, then until one day, uh, Ronnie Ronnie Lane brought down his new neighbour. That was Ronnie Wood, mm-hmm. and Ronnie was was playing bass with the Jack Beth band. Right, so, right. So and Ronnie started, said, "I don't really want to play bass. I want to play guitar." Mm-hmm. So that's when Ronnie. Got, you know, so to, to get into guitar. Yeah, you guys did a reunion later yeah. on with with Rick. Rick joined and played bass in the Small Faces. Oh yeah, no, that was nothing to do. With, yeah, that was later on. Later on, yeah. Rick has played not. with so many bands too. I know. Yeah, Peter Frampton. Yeah, Bad Company. Uh, man, the list goes on with him. And you know, you know what I loved about Rick. <clears throat> he was on David Gilmore's first solo album, and I love that yeah. album. Yeah, yeah, he was really good friends with David Gilmore, and uh, I know. That, that's what sparked me to, to get Rick on the show because of that album. Um, 
here's a congratulations on being in the rock and roll hall of fame by the way you were well, you guys you were inducted much. you were inducted 2012. Yeah, nice. i'm glad cool. the hall recognized the small faces oh me too because me too. <laughs> there's so many other bands that are not recognizing which is ridiculous but i know yeah it's, it's quite a big thing i mean it's like having a knighthood in america yeah you know the brits you guys should have your own rock and roll hall of fame and it, it should, should probably be, be in Birmingham <laughs> or <laughs> Liverpool. Or well, Liverpool. Liverpool would be good. Right? Yeah. Right or wrong? You should. Well, uh, there's a museum there with uh, uh, rock and roll instruments and clothes and things that they you go in and have a look. And uh, my, I, I, my, ba my small face is based on, and, and this is, was, I lent it to them to, to, so they could show, people go and see it. Okay. And also, you guys should have a progressive rock hall of fame because that's all the Brits. Yeah. Prog rock is all the Brits, man. You know, imagine well, that. Uh, why don't you start it? <laughs> uh, I've got enough things to do. <laughs> you got to deal with Rod Stewart. <laughs> yeah, trying to deal with Rod, yeah. <laughs> right. do, do you know Molly Marriott? Um, oh, Molly's lovely, yeah. And she sings. I've been trying to get her on the show, but I'm not able to get. We're we're on Facebook together, but I haven't been able to get her oh, on the you show. Should, you should do because uh, I was. I mean, I, when I was speak to her, I mentioned it to her. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I'd love she, to promote her. She calls you know? me uncle. Oh, she calls you uncle, huh? Yeah. Where where were you when when um, when Steve Marriott died? I was in uh, I was in New York. Funny enough, New York. And uh, I got a call from, funny enough, it to me, year before that, I right. got a call, sitting in the same hotel, in the, more or less the same room, when I got a call from the British print, uh, press saying, um, Al Jackson has just died, his wife. So I shot him five times in the back. I couldn't believe it. I said, Al Jackson, my favorite, one of my favorite drummers is Al Jackson. Mm -hmm. Booker T and the MGs. Yeah, that's right. So and then uh, I found myself years later, mm -hmm. I got the same similar call, same hotel, same more or less the same room. And it was a call from the British press saying, Same room. Being, being, he's died in a fire. What do you think? I said, well, I said, he can't be. I've been speaking to him last week. And uh, so that's how I found out about Steve. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. Yeah, I can't. I still can't believe it either. And I, I really don't know what happened, really. Well, apparently you know, he fell asleep with a cigarette in his, in his hand. And did he, he fall asleep with a cigarette? Yeah, apparently everything caught fire. Yeah. Smoke inhalation. That's the worst when you go get in bed with a <laughs> cigarette. He tried to run away from it and it, but it got lost and went into a cupboard. And that's where they found him. You know, that happened to a co worker of mine. Yeah, oh yeah. Same thing. He fell asleep with a cigarette and then he passed away that way. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's horrible, man. I hope it was a slip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the faces. Interesting, because they, you know, I mean, uh, you guys did that reunion with uh, with uh, Rod and and Ronnie Wood. Yeah. And I think it was 2021 when they first said you guys were going to go in the studio and, and record new music yeah. at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, some of the the big hits that you were on with Rod Stewart, of course, um, you were on, um, let's see, were, were you on uh, Every Picture Tells a Story on that album? I did a couple of tracks on that. Did a couple of tracks on that, yeah. Um, you played on Gasoline Alley, I think. Yeah. First step, long player, uh, a not as a good as a wink to a blind horse. That was in 71. And of course, Ooh La La in 73, right? Yeah. And Losing and then they, You. Go ahead. Losing You. And lo yeah, Losing You, which is one of my favorites. I'm a big Rare Earth fan, so anytime I hear that song, I get excited. Well, you know? but it's a great song, but it turned into a drum solo in the end. Yeah. Yeah, but it was incredible. When we when we recorded it in the studio, um, 
it was only supposed to be a, a drum break. Right. Just playing drums. No, something similar. Well, Rob was chanting over it. Hmm. That turned, that's why slowly over the years it got in more. That drum break got more like solo. Right. They all, they all run away and left me on stage playing it. <laughs> Went off the pub. <laughs> they just walked out. All right, Kenny, take it over. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's unusual? The Temptations, Rare Earth, and you guys made it very successful, and they all sound different. All songs sound, you got your own flavor to it, you know? Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it's an enjoyable song. We, we love it, you know? And oh, it's around, a great tune. Around, around the plinth as well. Yeah. It's a great song. It's a great song, man. Uh, and then Mickey Waller comes in. What yeah. happened when Mickey came in? Where, where, did, where were you at the time? I was probably at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mickey, Mickey was a great drummer. He's a lovely guy. Yeah. Uh, and he used to play, I mean, he used to be in Jeff Beck band, played drums right. with, with Rod and Woody. Mm -hmm. But there's that connection. And Mickey played on Maggie May, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Not as many times as I played it. Did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, you played on Stay With Me, right? Stay With Me, yeah. On the big, big Stay With Me tune. Yeah. Um, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. I played on yeah, that. Exactly. Then... <laughs> A guy I've had on my show many, many times comes in and plays drums for Rod Stewart is Carmine. Oh, Carmine, yeah. Lovely guy, lovely guy. And then he plays on the big hits, Do You Think I'm Sexy? I'm sexy and, yeah. and he yeah. co-wrote, <laughs> or co, yeah, he co-wrote, or he played the music for it, for yeah. Do You Think I'm Sexy? But Carmine's yeah. a great guy. I've had, he's a, he's a really got good guy. some money for it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I bet he would. I bet he did. I bet he did. I, I think so. he did pretty good. By the way, the Vanilla Fudge has a great album out called uh, Vanilla Zeppelin. It's all oh, cover tunes really? of Zeppelin. Oh, oh, really? Great. I love this. I love it's really it. good. It's, it's all. Out, yeah? yeah, it's all different versions of Zeppelin songs. Right. Well, I just come had. On, uh, come on, we'll definitely do that justice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're great at cover tunes. Vanilla Fudge has always been great at cover tunes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I understand you were a big polo player at one time, right? I, I used to play. I used to play a lot because I, I love horses. Yeah. Um, you don't play anymore? No. I, I, uh, I suddenly got more... I got... I found myself drumming too much. I didn't want to fall off and break an arm or a leg. <laughs> so, so I stopped. I was banned by the band. They're banned by the band. That's funny. Well, they're they're actually correct about that. Absolutely. I've broke, yeah. broken so many bones, man. Oh, God. It had so many surgeries. As you get older, you know, I just found out I have uh, osteoporosis. No, really? Yeah. Is that I, a drink? Huh? That's like a tropical drink. Yeah. Glass, glass, <laughs> a glass of that, please. My problem is I don't drink enough. <laughs> <laughs> My wife won't let me anymore. <laughs> People say, do you drink a lot? I said, no, I spill most of it. You spill most of it, yeah. Well, here's another reason for you to come to Sarasota and visit Rick. Because yeah, we do. Be we have a Sarasota Polo Club here. Oh, I know, yeah. I'm up yeah. there. I'd have to do that. Yeah, you got to come did, over did, and see I, Rick. I did play polo on my 70th birthday, just to prove a point. Yeah, how'd you do? Not very good. <laughs> no, I don't know how you do it. Staying on a horse and you know hitting the hitting the ball or whatever. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, an adrenaline sport, you know. Yeah, it's like horse hockey. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, exactly. You're going, up, you're going like 40, 40, 40 miles an hour on a horse. You spend most of your time look, looking backwards. I don't know how you do it, man. Do you have horses? Uh, my sons, I did have horses. My sons learned to play polo, and they they nicked all my horses, sold them, and got bigger, better stallions and things. I've got a feisty little thing, big things. Really? That I couldn't ride. I couldn't ride. They're too big. They're too big. Yeah. Well, like little dainty ones. 
I'm like you. I like horses. I like to ride horses as well. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, the law. What happened with that band with Paul Rogers? Oh, the law. I mean, we, we had a great. We made an, an album, mm -hmm. and we did, we, we had a deal with Atlantic Records, Army Ergen, and uh, we delivered the album, and they said, "So well, we, it, it's a nice album, but we, we think you could do better." Uh, he said, really? I said, what, what don't you like about it? They said, well, it sounds like something you were doing 15 years ago. I said, that's exactly what we want to sound like. <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's not, it never got released. That's a so, shame. No, we've, we've, got it in the, we've got it in the can, so I want to release it. I hope so. I think it'd be great, because some great, great atmospheric moments in that. How can you not release you and Paul Rogers? And uh, well, we did, we did, we made, we made an album, but it was a bit, it ended up being a bit clockwork, I think. Really, it's nice, nice album, but yeah, I like it, I like it when there's some dirtiness to it, right? Huh. Um, the reunion you guys did was for charity, right? Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, that was a uh, you did like a 90 minute set. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I wish I could have gone to that, man. That was, what kind of charity was that for? I can't remember. There's so many charities. Oh, it was a for prostate uh, cancer, I think. No, no, that, no. That was, that was recent. You're getting your charities mixed up. Oh, okay, all right. That that was another. That was another. Uh, okay. that we did it at my polo club, which is oh okay, for prostate cancer. Right, right. So I I called up the. Call up uh, Pete, Pete and Roger and said, "Look, um, I'm trying to raise money for post prostate cancer." And, right. uh, and they said, "Oh no, we'll do it. We'll help you." So, so, they, so we re reformed for for that, and that was that. And the, that was at the start of the summer. By the end of the summer, I had to call up um, Rod and Woody and said, "Can you do it for another one?" So we did it then. Too. Yeah. Well, good, good for you, man. That you know, more men need to be aware of that and get checked. I, well, you, you got to it's such a, it's such a killer disease. And I had a scare. You did? Yes, and I, I I got a biopsy done, but it wasn't cancer, luckily. But I did yeah, have like, a scare. I did have you, symptoms. Do you remember your your PSA was? I don't remember. I don't remember. I My wife's have, a nurse; she'll know. It must, it must have been low. I mean, yeah. I caught mine. I caught mine early. Good. Yeah, if you catch it early, you're fine. Yeah. You, you'll be I mean, all right. Yeah, no. It's, if you catch it early, you're fine. If you if you keep putting it off, and so I'll have a blood test. I'll, I'll check myself. Right. Out. That's when it gets worse. I mean, when your PSA goes up, you, you've had, you're in trouble. Yeah. A lot of rock stars died from that because they like Frank Zappa. For yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a feeling he didn't get checked that early. You know, a lot of exactly. a lot of them don't. Exactly right. Yeah. Shame, you know. I just got to mention this, this because this was crazy. That there, there was a uh, a death hoax about you, wasn't there, on the internet? Was there? Yeah, and, and this year, as a matter of fact, it said it was uh, the internet killed you. <laughs> you got to look it up. <laughs> what was it? Is that what killed me? I don't know. I just said I didn't read the whole thing, but it just said that. Uh, there was a death hoax. You know, a lot of celebrities get those death hoax. Oh, I so saw that. Yeah. yeah. But no, you're you're okay. You know. They can't and, catch me. See, I'm too fast. That's right. Exactly. As long as you're at the pub, you're, you'll be fine. <laughs> I wonder why they wanted to kill me. I don't know. Do I have any money? No. I don't know why. Now on YouTube, which is disgusting, they have like they'll have Michael J. Fox passed away, and he's yeah. still alive. You know oh, they, they're doing that just to to draw the page views. You know to YouTube, which is disgusting. Yeah. I hate that. It's terrible, yeah. No, no, it no, is no. terrible. I want to mention your book, "Let the Good oh, Times yeah. Roll: My Life in Small Faces, Faces and the Who." I'm yeah. going to promote your book. All, all, all I did, thank you very much. All I did was uh, tell the truth. Right, and so it was, and I sort of I started when I was about thirty years old. When I just joined, 
and I'd already lived a long a lot of life. So every time I did an interview with someone, I used to say, "We should write a book." I said, "So I got quite excited about it." So I thought, "Yeah, I'll, I'll write a book." So then I thought, "Hang on, I'm only thirty. I haven't lived any life. I'll do my own book." <laughs> so I, what I did was I, I I kind of sort of pieced it together slowly over the years. Then mm -hmm. I, I had got you know lots of little memories I, I wrote it down. And uh, I had a great guy, David, who helped me research where I was and what gigs I was doing in 1966 in Australia. And, uh, you know, well, because I couldn't bloody remember. <laughs> so it was great help like that. Also, he was, a, he was, he was an editor of a, a, a quite a big magazine, which the name, name escapes me. Right. So it was quite, very useful for that. I would, instead of me saying something, Two or three times and over. He said, No, you only need to say it once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so producing a record is the same thing, but uh -huh. producing a book is you need someone there to, to edit it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is it hard telling the truth? Funny enough, little bits were because I thought, No, I'm going to come out, just tell it like it is because right. that's the way to do it, you know. So I, no, I was bad, but I, I didn't feel, I didn't think I offended anyone. Mm -hmm. More like people offended me. Yeah, yeah. So, which band was the most raucous and wild? Was it the Small Faces or the Faces? Oh, the Faces, without a doubt. Really? I, I, I sum it up like this: Small Faces was the most creative band I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. The Faces was happy-go-lucky, fun, great. Uh, right. uh, I had a great, all of us had a great time. So, like, on the party, every gig was a party. Yeah. That was great. And then the, it was most exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw you, I saw you in The Who on yeah. the tour in, um, at the Capitol Center in Maryland. Oh, I, right. think, I think it was the uh, Quadrophenia. Oh, yeah. You, you guys did Quadrophenia. And so, you had, um, I think, Gary Glitter, right? Was was on stage with you guys and um, um, what's his name? I can't remember. You had another guy on stage with you too. I can't remember either. Yeah. <laughs> those, those, those are people who used to come on get on stage. Yeah. It's happening. It's happening to me too. The, the guy who did Rebel Yell. Um, oh yeah, Rebel Rebel. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you fit right in with the Who, man. That was that was pretty good. Did you like playing with the Who? Yeah, I, I, it was a great day. I mean, I, the only thing was that uh, I said to, when I joined there, I said, I'm not going to copy Keith Moon at right. all. Yeah, so, exactly. But there are certain, so, certain things he does and certain things in, on certain songs, which I think is great, and I, I do, I'll do them my way, and that's it. But I'm not copying it. <laughs> like, I'm a completely different drummer. I'm a straight sure. drummer. So that's what I did. Yeah. Great, great band, The Who. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. yeah. I served my tour of duty over the 10 years I was with them. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Should be very proud of that. I am, yeah, I am. Yeah. All right, Kenny, here's a question I ask everybody. I get some very interesting answers, okay? Okay. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Oh, uh, well, luckily I've played with the, the ones already. Yeah. Chuck Berry, uh, Jody Lewis, Bo Diddley. Uh, oh, the old 50s but, guys. Uh, but it has to be Elvis Presley, I think. Elvis, yeah. And uh, uh, Nat King Cole. Really? You want to uh, play drums for Nat? Oh, uh, Nat, Nat King Cole is a great pianist and also a great vocalist. One of my mm -hmm. favorite singers. I agree, especially around Christmas time. <laughs> oh, yeah, always around. Yeah. <laughs> There's not roasting on an open fire. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I interviewed uh, Mel Torme, who wrote that song. He, I interviewed his son. Oh, great song. Yeah, recently. lovely. Yeah, his son was cool. Very, very cool guy. And his, his, apparently his dad was a really, really good guy. Yeah. Yeah. My well, mom actually picked up Nat King Cole at the airport. That's, that was her job in Cuba. My mom really? was born and raised in Cuba. And at the Tropicana, she had oh, a boyfriend no. at the time that was head of entertainment 
So she used to bring the talent over to the Tropicana. So she brought Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, all those people down to the Tropicana and, and drove them, which was well, pretty cool. Lucky girl. Yeah. She said Nat King Cole was such a nice guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I could, I, I, you know, it's just one of those voices that just it's relaxes you straight away. I agree with you. Beautiful voice. I, I love that era, you know. Yeah. Andy Williams, Sinatra, you know, yeah, that that was a great era of music. All right, yeah. what's next for Kenny? You, you when are you going to be finishing the studio? Well, I pro we're probably going to do something. Well, it's not, Christmas is coming coming the end of this year, is not soon. Okay, so next, next year. Next year. So it's going to be. Uh, do you have any guest performers, or is it just you, Rod, and? Uh, no, there, there will there will be probably, but I'm not quite sure yet. Right, and a especially, possible tour, especially when we go out on the road. Right, definitely. Yeah. You think you'll do the states? Oh yeah, we'll have to do the states. Yeah, yeah, and Florida. <laughs> yeah, come see you. Definitely, and Rick, you got to see and Rick. Rick. And Rick, yeah. <laughs> Rick's having a party. Exactly. Kenny, I want to thank you, man, for being on the show today. It's a real pleasure. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I want to mention, uh, for more information about Kenny Jones, you can go to his official website, um, kennyjones.com, of course. Uh, you're on Facebook. You're on Twitter. You're on Instagram. You can also go to the Small Faces official website, Faces official website, and the Who's official website. I also listed all your your discography, all your albums that you played on. Oh. I listed all of them for everybody so they know and they can go out and buy some of I your music. Must, I must go on them all and see what, see what I did play on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your beverage of choice when you go to the pub? No, no, I, 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 I drink, I recently got into rosé. Okay. Really nice dry rosé. I really enjoy it. Do you really? Yeah, I can't can't drink a lot these days. A couple yeah. of glasses of wine, fun. Yeah, yeah. Every night. I, <laughs> yeah, when you're on medication, it's hard to drink too much, and yeah. I'm the same way. Blood pressure medicine, cholesterol medicine. <laughs> it sucks to get old, man. <laughs> it makes a nice cocktail, isn't it? Just stir all up, crush it all up, and stir it all up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, thank you, man, for being on the show. My best to you and your family, all the grandkids. Let's, keep doing what do you're again. doing. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you next time and keep in touch. You take care. All right, Kenny. Take care, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.